Hi everyone, Marianne Cowan here from Pinery Paper Crafts. It is Sunday, January the 17th. Whoops. My name is Marianne Cowan. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Ottawa, Canada. And we've had a beautiful snowy weekend here in the capital. And I got to spend a lot of time in my craft room. So today I am featuring one of the celebration stamp sets, A Touch of Ink. On Sunday nights for the next two months, I will be featuring celebration items, Sunday celebration. Hi, Pat. And during the week, I will be focusing on other products from the new catalog. This week, um, I was going to do the Hey Chick, but I've changed my mind. And I'm going to focus on Kangaroo and Company and Snailed It. Because these two are really fun for Valentine's Day. And if you want to make Valentine's cards in time to get them sent for Valentine's Day, I figured I should do it this week. So this week we're going to be focusing on more Valentine's Day cards or just love cards or just any kind of cards using Snailed It and Kangaroo and Company. And if you are one of my friends that ordered, one of my customers that ordered the Snailed It Stamp Camp, or not Stamp Camp, um, card class to go, then they are already packaged and they will be delivered. Um, I'm going to deliver them at the same time as the Hydrangea Hill one because a lot of people ordered both. But they're all ready for you. And if you have never ordered one of my classes before, some of the people who have popped on have, so that maybe they can comment. Um, they really are good value for the money. You receive all the products, cut prepped, ready, all you have to do is add your sentiment. You always get something fun and cute from me. You can see a little sneak peek of something in this one. Um, for the snail mail, you get a full pack of resin hearts and then a half pack of the black matte um, dots, I forget what they're called. And the class was advertised as eight cards, four designs, two of each. But there's also a bonus card designed by Molly. And you receive four of the little treat boxes and four little candies to put in them. So my classes are always a great deal. There will be a PDF tutorial available for this if you're not in Canada or you're a demonstrator and you don't want to buy the products from me. Although I will say it's still a great deal. I do buy product um, classes to go from, even though I am a demonstrator, um, usually just to see how they're put together. So this is snail mail class to go. This one is already full. The next one coming up is I have, I will, they're not on my website yet, but all the January to April classes. The next one coming up is January 30th, Hydrangea Hill. Then we have stamp a stack of birthday, hey chick. Dragonfly, Masculine, Spring Stamp Camp, and All About Florals. So those are all the classes to go from now until the end of April. Hello everyone that logged in. And if you're still thinking about purchasing the Hydrangea Hill class to go, the class to go, the option one, is the dies, the stamp set, the ribbon, and the pearls. And that is $80. And just this alone is over $70, so it's a really good deal. Plus you get all the cards. If you're just ordering the $40 option two package, you still get the pearls. And here are a sneak peek of the cards we'll be making. This one I showed on a Facebook Live. Here's another one that we'll be making. You do add your own sentiments, but everything else is prepped for you. 
This one is a fun fold. And this one with this beautiful pinky Rococo rose and petal pink. I tie all your bows, everything's ready, so all you would have to do is stamp your sentiment on this little slip. And as I said, if you're not in Canada or you're a demo and you don't want to purchase the classes to, from me, then the PDF will be available for purchase. All right, I think that's all of my commercials. Okay, so today we're going to feature the A Touch of Ink, and I actually have four cards tonight, and I wanna show you a little technique that I did for two of the cards, maybe three of the cards, two of the cards. So it has this beautiful hummingbird, these brand um, leaves, a flower, and a butterfly. So I'm just gonna slide everything else out of the way. And we're going to start with these two cards. So this is the first card. Whisper White, eight and a half by five and a half, folded in half. This one is Thick Whisper White. And hopefully everyone can hear me. I had a couple of comments on my YouTube channel that people could not hear me. So I don't know because when I check, I can hear me, but I don't know what's wrong. But I apologize if you cannot hear me. Hi, Cindy. Yes, the pink one would be perfect for the breast cancer. I always do a breast cancer fundraiser in October and a um, CHIO, which is our children's hospital fundraiser in June. And then I also donate a lot of my cards, well, all of my cards, to our hairdresser who currently is doing a fundraiser for breast cancer. Well, not right now because they're closed. And our local hospice who sells them to support the hospice. All right, back to my card. Whisper white face. And then I embossed the second layer with the pine planks or plank wood four by five and a quarter. So let's go ahead and put this on with our liquid glue. I like using liquid glue when I have anything embossed. Now my next layer is vellum and this is the stitched rectangle, no the stitched shapes, and this is the rectangle, the scalloped rectangle. It's the largest one. And then the next size down is already stamped, but I'm gonna show you how I did this. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. And once I put this card together, I'll show you the little tricks for doing this. And if you're in my Pinery Paper Crafts team, I have a little surprise for you. Yes, the touch of ink is beautiful. All right, then I have this little scalloped, oh, I can't remember which set it was from. And then Hello Friend is one of the stamps from this set. This set has a ton of stamps. That is why it is at the level two in celebration. So in Canada, that's with a $120 purchase. But if you see it, you can, you'll know why. And I'm just going to slide over all the stamps. And this isn't even all of them. This is the ones that I've used for the cards tonight. The sentiments are beautiful. And I haven't even used, like these aren't even all stamped, are all blocked up. But these are the ones I used for the cards today. So it's a very large stamp set. It actually has two sections of stamps and they're quite a bit bigger than shown on the front. So it really is a good deal. All right, and I was so excited because I was doing some, well, you'll see when we continue on. This one is gold embossed on Whisper White. I'm just gonna hold it up so you can see it. And I've used for this one, Mango Melody, Light and Dark. Did I? 
Yeah, Mango Melody. So with the gold embossing and the Mango Melody, then once it was dry, I went over it with Wink of Stella. And it was a new Wink of Stella, so there is a lot of glitter on this card, or on this little butterfly. I actually did a Google search of images of monarch butterflies. We have a lot of monarch butterflies in our gardens. And this one is a little lighter than a monarch butterfly, but it is still really pretty. All right, so we've got this stamped with this. Now for this one, I'm going to do linen thread and I'm going to do it around this base. That's why I glued that already. And I'm going to do it two times. I hope everyone in Ottawa got out this weekend to enjoy that beautiful snow. Either ski or snowshoe. I did snowshoeing both days. It was spectacular. I think I posted something on this Facebook. I did. I know I did on my own Facebook and my Instagram. That's not really tight enough. <laughs> Norm said today, every time I turned, you turned a corner, you're taking a picture. Because every corner was more beautiful than the last. It was just, it was breathtaking. If you live somewhere where you don't have snow, I know you probably don't want snow for as long as we get snow, but it is spectacular. You know what, I'm gonna move this over here actually. And it's a good thing we have days like yesterday and today because otherwise we'd probably be in a deep depression with all the snow. But it is so beautiful that every time you walk out and look at all the trees laden with the snow, it is so pretty. All right, that's gonna have to do. I'm gonna put a little glue dot under here. I don't know why it's not going really tight. I'll be glad when I get onto my next package of glue dots that are not on the wrong side. All right, that's good. I'm gonna pop this up with dimensionals that I just seem to have lost. Yeah, it was beautiful. Pat, did you go skiing? It was nice skiing, but you would have really been having to, unless you go somewhere where there, it was already track set, you would have been track setting the trail. The snow was pretty deep, actually. I was glad I had my snowshoes on yesterday. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a minute. So here we have our beautiful butterfly. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna give it a bit of a curve. And I want it coming in right on the flower because they actually do that. It's really cool. Uh, our daughter got a video, Liz, got a video of a monarch butterfly hovering above a flower and the amount of times it flaps its wings is incredible. So I want to remind you of the foam adhesive sheets, six to a pack. And you can cut them as big or little as you want. They are different than the foam adhesive strips. The foam adhesive strips were designed to do um, shaker cards. And I actually measured the height of that to the height of the foam adhesive strips. And it's a millimeter less. So this one is higher and I don't always want it that high. So I like these little strips. So what I did is I cut off a really thin piece because I want to use it for some of my cards to go right down the body of the butterfly. Oh yeah, it'll be quieter this week, you're right. Okay, so I'm gonna put that right here on the body of my butterfly because I've curled it up. And I want them coming in at the flower because that's actually what they do. They come in right at the middle of the flower, but. I'm going to fake it and put it a little bit further out. All right, now for this one, I did go ahead and color some gemstones uh, with my pool party. 
I don't want a lot on this card because I think it's pretty the way it is. But I'm just going to add a couple. And I do have a sentiment somewhere. I'm always so organized when I start, but... All right, I'm gonna leave it because I'm sure I'll find it in a second. It goes right down here. In the meanwhile, I'm going to add Wink of Stella just to the pink flower and not as much as is on the butterfly. All right, that's our first card. So pretty. If you could see this in person, it is so glittery. And it's because it was a new Wink of Stella. And you know when you first push it where it says push, you get this little puddle of Wink of Stella? Yeah. All right, so there's card one. Next card is the Hummingbird. So same design. And I'm going to fold it in half. I've got a little mark there, but that's okay. I'm going to put that on the back. Same wood plank. So it's, uh, no, I don't want to go ahead and put that on because I'm putting a ribbon around. Then I have the stitched square and pool party with the square layering dies. So it's just a little tiny bit of an overlap, but just enough to give you a bit of color. And if you'll notice, I've stamped. There is a second layer stamping, and then I've sponged with the new stamping brushes. All right, so before I do add that, I want to add a piece of ribbon. This is the Pool Party Sheer Ribbon. It's actually in the annual catalog. And if any of you did the um, breast cancer class with the snowflakes, you got some of this ribbon with that class. You didn't get a whole bowl fit because you got a whole bunch of different ribbons. So I'm gonna to try to do a sideways bow. It is so pretty, this ribbon. And for this card, we have the hummingbird. We'll wait till I show you how pretty the hummingbird is. Okay, pulling it kind of tight. That's good. And then you can slide it over if you want it a little bit further in, which I want it just a smidgen. And I'm gonna glue it and then I will add a couple of glue dots to the front. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to pop this up, but before I do, I'm gonna add Wink of Stella to the purple flowers. And I know you can't tell from far away, but it really is pretty. I wanna add, I have these little jewels here. I'm gonna add them to the middles of the flowers. That is actually where the birds come and the insects and the butterflies. All right, let's add some dimensionals. If I can find them again. All right, so I'm just going to put one in each corner. Oh, that's so cool, Judith. Yes, I was a grade one teacher. Well, I taught every grade and then a principal. And I used to love when the teachers would order the larva for the butterflies. What kind? They were painted butterflies that we used to get the larvae for. And they would be in their uh, little 
netted cocoon thing. And then they would always call me down when it was the day that they were releasing them. It was so fun. All right, here's my hummingbird. Look how beautiful this is. So I heat embossed with silver on vellum. Then I colored on the back with Bermuda Bay and uh, um, Granny Apple Green. The hummingbirds we have at our feeders here and at the cottage are, they all have green heads and they're greenish blue. So that was my inspiration. So this is the hummingbird done in vellum. I don't have a hummingbird done not in vellum for this card. For the butterflies, I have some in vellum and some just in paper. But for the hummingbird, I just have it in vellum. And the hummingbirds actually don't have hummingbird feeders, but I choose trumpet flowers that attract the hummingbirds. And they bury their beak right into the center of the flower. So I am going to put a dimensional, just wondering if it's gonna show through. So the trick is to color it on the back. And actually, if you look closely, I've done actually two layers of Wink of Stella on the front. Up close, it is gorgeous. I think this might be okay, just because it has so much coloring and stuff on it. If you held it up, you can probably see the dimensional through, but once I put it on the card, I think it'll be fine. And here I have my little greeting. Thank you so much. And that's going to go down here. This is from the stamp set. Oops. So let's just put a couple of dimensionals. I still haven't found the greeting for the first card, but I will. It's got to be here somewhere. I have this one that was extra that I could put on, but that's not the one I had. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one down a little bit. Now, let's go check our bow. Trim it off just a bit. And I think I'll put a glue dot under there, although it seems to be sticking fine, just for that extra security. So there's the hummingbird. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. We have a ton of hummingbirds. I don't know if they're in pairs. I've never actually checked. Teresa, I'll have to check. I know a lot of birds do come in pairs and stay in pairs, um, but this is beautiful. And heat embossing, and Teresa, it's not hard to do. So that's our hummingbird one. I'm not doing any inside cards today because it'll take too long. All right, next one is a simple one. And this is the sentiment for the first one. But now that I have it here, I don't know if I like it. So this was the one I was thinking of putting on the first one. Hello, friend. But I don't really like it there. Actually, maybe it's okay. All right, let's just put it on. The sentiment is from the stamp set. I'm just using glue dots to make it quick and easy. There we go. All right, so for the next card, I've lost my butterfly. So we have Highland Heather. Regular size. Then we have Rococo Rose. And then we have a piece from the Hydrangea Designer Series paper. And I chose this piece. It's one piece that has these on the bottom and on the top facing down. And you just have to be very strategic how you cut it. I'm just looking for my other butterfly. There 
is in vellum. I don't know what happened to it. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you how I did the other two, and I'm just going to do a bit of stamping, and then I'll probably find my butterfly. All right, so to do this stamping to get the flower coming out of here, because the flower is actually quite large, and here I've done the greenery around the flower, so let's do that one, and I'll show you how to do it. Take your little piece, I just have this scallop piece, so I'm going to do my flower first, and I'm going to do my flower with Blushing Bride. So I just do full strength ink into the corner. This shape is from the Hippo and Friends. All right, next there is a stamp that has the coloring for this one. So I like to stamp off, so stamp it up, stamp it off, and then go ahead and stamp. And it's not gonna be exact, It's supposed to give that watercolor look. All right, perfect. So we have those two done. Now, what I did is I made a mask for the flowers. A mask is taking, I stamped it on a sticky note, which are full adhesive notes, Amazon com wherever you um, wherever you buy your stuff but they're full adhesive sheets not extra sticky full adhesive sheets so when you pull this off it is sticky the whole way along so what I did is I stamped my image right on the sticky then I cut it out so that when I use my leaf it's not going to stamp over of my, over top of my flowers so now I have my leaf stamp, and as I'm talking, I'm still looking around for my missing butterfly because it's so pretty. All right, so for this one, for the outline, I like to use the same color ink, and then I on the outline, I use it full strength, and on the inside watercolor part, I do stamping off. So I kind of line it up how I think it would look good. So that looks good. So if you're on my team, I just ordered a bunch of these sticky notes so that I can give you each a pack at our next team meeting. All right, so then I have that with the outline of the leaf. And then there is a stamp for the watercolor part of the leaf. Stamp it up, stamp it off. I actually want this pretty light So that's the first one, turned out good. And depending on how dark or light you want it, you could use a lighter color, I could use soft sea foam, or I could just stamp it off. And if you stamp it off once, it'll be a certain level, and if you stamp it off twice, it'll be even lighter. All right. You can also do it the opposite way. The first time I did it, I stamped the leaves first and then added the flower. And then I realized it's actually better to do the flower first and the leaves because I did make a mask with the leaves as well. And then what I do is I take my mask and I put it I take my stamp set and I stick the mask in here. So then the next time I go to use it, you can probably use it 10 times, then I have it available. And then you have your 
inked image and you can see where it goes over a little bit but not much so that's how I did the stamping for those other two the first two cards all right I know some of you probably knew that technique but it might be new to some of some other people all right back to this card thinking of you and looking for my butterfly which is so pretty I can't believe I can't find it okay I'm gonna go to the next card and hopefully I'll find my butterfly third card this was a technique I saw online eight and a half by five and a half folded in half this color is bumblebee Then I have a layer of uh, So Saffron, and this is from the, uh, it's one of the free DSPs from the Celebration, Field of Flowers, I think it is. And so that's going to go next. And I want to put twine around that, so let's go ahead and put this. As I'm talking, I'm looking around for my missing butterfly. It's a really pretty one, it's made of vellum. All right, now I want to put twine around, not twine, linen thread. Um, I'm going to do it to the right. And this is going to go, I'm just checking spacing. So this is going to go here. Yeah, that looks about good. You can do it how oh, it's kind of long on one side, short on the other. As long as the side that you're flipping it around is the longer side, you're good to go. But I'm probably like you, I don't like wasting any. All right, I'm just going to slide it over a little bit because I don't want it quite that far. Oops, there we go. It's kind of bending it. You have to be careful. So I've got the two little lines there. Now I can go ahead and glue this on. Judith, just look on Amazon, but not the extra sticky. They're called full, or the other one, uh, the other term was not full, but anyway, it's not just extra sticky. It's a full adhesive. All right, now I have a piece of vellum, and then I have Whisper White. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing, which is good, because I'll show you now. How did I get the blue part around the flowers? Because if you look here, it looks pretty stark white and I don't like that. So I like to add blue. So with our new blending brushes, this is uber easy. So pull this back in. I have pool party. I wish we had a blue that was a bit lighter. You just have to be careful how you order, uh, how you order, sorry Wanda, I was looking at your post, how you, how dark you do it. Because I will tell you this one, I liked, it was light, and then this one, I did a bit too dark. It's okay if you go dark around the edges, but I wanted it, I wanted it a bit lighter, like this one. So, take your blending brush, I don't clean them, so this is my blue one, it says pool party, piscine party, en français. Um, so on this, your stamp pad, you have different labels so I did pool party here and then piscine which is pool en français so just rub it around a little bit now when you first come off it's really dark so rub it off a little bit first and then start coming in and see how you like it and it's okay to go over your image a little bit if your image is fairly dark I'm gonna put a little bit more on and then start off the paper and go in and then just see. If it's too dark, 
lighten up your pressure. So that's actually a little bit darker than I wanted. So I'm lightening up my pressure. That's more like what I want. But I don't mind it dark around the edges, but then really light. I have practically no pressure in the middle. All right. So the idea for this card is that we have a stamped image, soft suede. I've colored it with pumpkin pie, light and dark, and then blended it back and forth. Usually what I do is I start with the light, I go to the dark, and then I go back in with the light. No glitter or anything on this one because I will show you in a moment why. Still looking for my little butterfly. Possibly could have flown away. Masking is really fun. So I'm going to center this. Now, I have the leaf from the hydrangea um, die cut dies. I'm not using the hydrangea dies, but I like this leaf and this stem. Then I have the large of the daisies and I wanted to fold it over like some of the flowers in my garden look. And when a butterfly lands, it lands right in the middle of the flower. I want this to look authentic. So it's going to look something like this. So I didn't think to use the adhesive sheet on this. So we're just going to put a little tiny bit of the white glue. And when you do the white glue, I could use my um, silicone mat and do some sponging, but I'm lazy. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue kind of down the middle. I don't care if it's all the way down. And I could have done that with my stamping sponge, but... Um, I probably should have put this on first. There's only a tiny bit of glue. I'm going to put this on with dimensionals. So I can see exactly where I need everything to go. I'm putting the dimensionals on the back of the cardstock so that you can't see it. Maybe I should have put that a bit higher, I don't know. All right, now this flower, I want it, his feet to kind of be landing in it. I'm going to actually Add a dimensional. It kind of reminds me of Echinacea, although it is a daisy, but just the way that it folds back like that. Now, it's actually stuck to the dimensional underneath. I don't really want that, but if you do, just push it down. I kind of like it a little more free flowing. All right, but the fun part of this card, so I took another one, stamped it. No, this one is actually gold embossed, did the same colors, and a ton of Wink of Stella. Hopefully you can see that. Now I'm gonna give it a bit of a bend. So I wanna make it look like it's the front and back of the butterfly. So I have my little strip again. I'm gonna cut off a little piece. I'm gonna add it right to the body part. You can see right here where the body of the butterfly is. See how perfect that is? Now, I'm going to try to get it on top exact. And it's so cool, it looks like it's actually landing on the flower.
And then when you look at it, you can see the front and the back of the butterfly. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm gonna put a bit of Wink of Stella here. But that's about it. I could go and add some dimensionals, or not dimensionals, some gems, but I don't know. I think this card is just perfect the way it is. I do have a greeting. Where is it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't like that one. I'm not going to put a greeting right now because I actually can't find my greeting. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? I saw someone else use the same technique, not the same design of a card, but the same technique. And you could do, I was thinking of doing the beautiful hydrangea cutout, but it's quite big and the butterfly is quite big. So you might have to do it this way or I don't know. That's why I did the flower in half. I also thought of doing that one and then another one, another smaller one below, but I really think it's got enough going on there. Love it. All right, so we've got three done. I seem to be talking a lot. Oh yeah, 741. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick look for my other little butterfly that was so pretty. Thinking of you goes up here. Just ooh and awe amongst yourselves. What happens is they get stuck to other things. Well, we'll go ahead and put this together. It's going to drive me crazy. So I'm just gonna add this because I do wanna add linen thread again. What I should do is stick all the pieces inside the card. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do from now on. Stick everything inside the card. Because this one I did in vellum and it's really, really pretty. So hopefully I can find it. And when I do it in vellum, I always like to color on the back. I'll tie this now, but I do want it a bit lower. More like down here. And when you do that double linen thread, you can either crisscross it or just keep it straight like I did for this one. This one is more crisscross. I'm hoping as I'm flipping through all this, I'm gonna find my missing butterfly. Do you guys, this happen to you? Like you have something all ready to go and it goes missing. Whoops. So we have um, Highland Heather, Rococo Rose, I'm going to pop this up, I'm hoping as I'm doing this it's going to like fly into my area, and it's vellum and it's see-through so it's really hard to see, oh my gosh. It could be in so many places. Maybe we'll go back and add some bling. All right, so let's add our sentiment. I hope I find it too, Judith. 
I know I will. If I do find it, it'll be as soon as I log off. All right, you guys look at these for a second. Tell me which one is your favorite while I look for it. I did it the same as I did the hummingbird. All right, so those three, I'm gonna put these stamps out of the way. So here's the butterfly. I heat embossed it with silver, embossing, um, pa not paste, embossing powder. Wink of Stella on the front, tons of Wink of Stella. And then I colored the back Bermuda Bay and I think Pool Party. I will say when you color the back, you have to use really the dark colors. And even this one, I probably colored it five times and it shows up a little bit, but not a lot. And then I was thinking after, I probably should have picked a different color than blue because I'm putting it on a blue background. But, hey, it is what it is. So now I'm gonna add another little strip. might be a bit big. You can see where the body is. So I didn't bother to color the body. But because the body is heat embossed, then you don't really see the um, sticky, the dimensional underneath because it's all dark silver. So I picked, when you're picking out your paper, you also have to be cognizant of which section you pick. So I picked this section because it had this one major flower and I thought I would do Wink of Stella on this one flower. Lots of Wink of Stella. And there's tons of Wink of Stella on this butterfly. And then I would have the butterfly just resting on the flower. Now, just make sure that you don't go off the card. Oh, I was gonna say, to be honest, I thought it was coming in this way. Okay, I almost put the butterfly on upside down. It is coming, <laughs> that's the antenna. Oh my gosh. All right, now for this one, I thought of adding couple of no I think I'll add some pastel pearls just because there's not a lot going on so I think it would be pretty to add a couple of pearls and we have the light purple we have the pink we have the dark purple and we have the blue I'm not going to put all of them on but I think we'll put a pink because that's my focus flower. Oopsie. And maybe a couple of purple ones. All right, so there's thinking of you. For this one, I wasn't gonna add any. This one, we added the colored rhinestones. And for this one, we added the color rhinestones as well. And you could go back and add them into, maybe I'll, there, a little pearl there. All right. So there we go. With our four, cards, so two of them with the embossed on vellum. This one is just colored on cardstock using blends. And this one colored on cardstock, no, heat embossed in gold, then colored with blends. And then the other one underneath to kind of look like the other set of wings. All right. Hummingbird is your favorite? It is pretty. I really like the colors. 
And when I, I looked up images of hummingbirds, there's so many different colors. So I picked the hummingbird colors that of the hummingbirds that come to our place. And we actually do get ones with the greens and blues. I'm thinking I should have. There we go. Not too much, but just a little bit of lift. Oh, I think all these cards are really pretty. All right, just looking at your comments. Does anyone else have a favorite? The hydrangea? Yeah, that one's pretty. This one is so simple because you just cut out that piece of paper, stamp a butterfly or a hummingbird. The hummingbirds would come to hydrangeas as well. And then pop it on your paper. I felt it needed something else, so that's why I added the little linen thread to the bottom. And then thinking of you, all the sentiments I used were ones from this set. So... It has best wishes, thank you so much, which we used, thinking of you, which we used, hello friend, which we used, hope and love. And it's also got these little speckles. I love background little speckles. And you could also do the watercolor wash on the butterfly and the watercolor wash on the hummingbird. I chose to try something different, but you could definitely use that as well. And if you wanna have different colors, then when you take your um, stamp, use a dauber and then daub different colors on it of ink. Like let's say I want green here and blend it into blue and green and green for the head. And then before you stamp it, just blow on it so it gets moist again and then stamp. You could also use your stamp and write markers, but the daubers give you more of a blended look, I think. All right, just looking at comments. I don't know, I went really long tonight. Yes, the ruby throat ones are beautiful. Yeah, that would be really pretty to try. And it's easy to do because in the stamp, it has, you can see where you can easily add the different colors. You can add the ruby throat there and whatever other colors the ruby throat ones are. So you can definitely make it your own and make it so that it matches wherever you live. All right. I think they're all pretty as well. So um, this stamp set is not for sale. You have to earn it through celebration, which is pretty easy. Spending $120 before tax and shipping and you would get this free. And this is a beautiful, beautiful stamp set. I only touched on a few cards that you could do with it. Um, but there's so many more things that you could do with it. All right. Thank you for joining me this evening. Tonight is Sunday. So tomorrow I will, or all this week, I will be doing Valentine's Day cards and treat holders. I'm going to be working with the Snail It, Snail, Snail Mail, no, Snail, Snailed It stamp set and bundle. And the Kangaroo bundle as well. Because they both have cute sets for Valentine's Day and other occasions as well. But this week I will be focusing on Valentine's Day so that if there's any products that you want to order, you can get them in time for Valentine's Day. I do appreciate it if you like or share my video. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope the sound is okay. Some people have said the sound is not good, but I don't know what to tell you. It seems to be good from my end, but I am checking. I do use a microphone when I record my videos, but this the way you record them on Facebook and YouTube is not the same, so sometimes that distorts the sound. Anyways, hopefully you learned a few new techniques, and um, I'll see you tomorrow at 3, all every day this week at 3 o'clock for Valentine's Day fun. Thanks, and enjoy your Sunday evening.